America's number one sports book is here. Sports betting in the palm of your hand. It's been legal in the Bay State since March, and the ads for the gambling sites are everywhere. But when it comes to young people, critics say the mass marketing and accessibility of online sports gambling are a recipe for disaster. 25 investigates spent weeks researching the risks and asked top state officials what needs to be done to make sure underage users are not getting in trouble on those apps. Anchor and investigative reporter Carrie Cavanaugh also talked to gaming lobbyists who say legalization and regulation makes online betting safer. There are now six online mobile betting sites that launched in the Bay State in March. Right now, though, you cannot bet if you're under 21. We wanted to know what's in place to ensure young people aren't on these apps and what's being done to keep people from getting hooked. It's a loaded gun. It is crack cocaine. It is that addictive. Recovering problem gambler Marty Terrell of Deerfield says he went through more than $2 million by the time he was sentenced to prison for wire fraud. He says he fears young people will struggle to resist sports gambling now at their fingertips. Started gambling as a teenager and I immediately became a problem gambler. Gambling compulsively, believe it or not, is an action high. Kenny Olson of Foxborough is also in recovery. He says he got his first action high when he was 13. And you can get paid instantly. The mindset of a young person is they're going to win. They could actually think they could get something for nothing and life doesn't work like that. Olson's concerned about how even individual bets are being advertised, and he's not the only one. We don't want our people losing before they even start the game. One on one with State Attorney General Andrea Campbell, she told me she's not opposed to the legalization of sports betting, but wants to ensure it's responsible. When you have sports betting on an addictive device, um, it compounds it and makes it even more difficult to frankly, um, not become addicted to gambling. Do you think there are enough safeguards in place to keep young people off these apps? Initially, no. And I think there's still work to do in that space. And we know if you design an app in a certain way, it will not only limit usage, but it also can protect young people. Campbell has been asking the State Gaming Commission to require operators to ask for a selfie along with an ID when creating an account to ban certain promotional offers and enticements, and ban so-called experts suggesting bets as if they had inside knowledge. There's also scrutiny around where and how problem gambling resources are shared. So we looked at a few sites to see how they're conveying problem gambling resources and help to their customers. They're all a little bit different. DraftKings has an icon in the top right corner of their homepage. FanDuel has theirs in the center of their homepage. For BetMGM, you have to go about four pages in to find help for problem gambling. Should that be front and center on your, your title bar? So I take your point. There's still a lot of work to be done. Responsible gambling messages have gotten more prominent. Martin Lichka and Bill Pascrell are online gaming lobbyists who work with Entain, a global sports betting company affiliated with BetMGM. They flew up from New Jersey to talk to me about how the industry is educating customers about responsible online betting and the risk of problem gambling. The best way to impact responsible gaming, problem gambling, and the black market is to legalize it. Now, we do acknowledge that there is a risk, but the industry has been doing a lot to prevent the risk. Isn't the risk in and of itself just opening up the app and starting to do bets? No. It's not? No. How so? The risk is where we're not being mindful of monitoring properly. The industry can track you as well as the regulators. We don't want to get into the old style tradition of looking at the problem gambler as the VIP customer. They also noted Massachusetts requires all sports betting platforms have tools for customers to limit their spending and time on the sites. But AG Campbell believes the onus should be on the operators to intervene. When they're seeing troubling activity or red flags to make sure that they're doing everything in their power to help someone. We reached out to all six online sports betting sites, all declined to do an interview with us. Some provided statements about their approach to customer safety. You can find those on boston25news.com. There you can also find resources for problem gambling, including the state's 24-7 helpline, 1-800-327-5050. For 25 Investigates, I'm Kerry